In today's video, we're going to learn the concept of phrasing to learn the tune, Core Holy's 43rd Welcome to the Northern Meeting. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In the description below, there is a link to the PDF document you see here, so go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. So today we're going to use the concept of phrases to learn the tune, Coral Holy's 43rd Welcome to the Northern Meeting. But moreover, what's a phrase? What do I mean when I talk about a musical phrase? Well, a musical phrase is kind of the smallest meaningful amount of melody that adds up to something. We could play a note, we could play a few notes together, but until it's a phrase, it doesn't feel like a kind of a cogent single musical idea. So how do you know when a phrase starts and stops? Well, in pipe music, they tend to be right about two measures or bars long, but it's not strict. Sometimes there's pickup notes, notes that come before the downbeat. Sometimes they end before the end of the beat. But today, I've already broken this down into phrases, so you don't have to worry about figuring that out yourself. One way I like to kind of break a phrase down when I'm listening to one in the music and I don't have them predetermined like this, it should sound like an old school cell phone ringtone. So on and so forth, where, you know, that's the bit, that's the sentence, that's the idea. In that case, that was phrase one, but you can do that with any of the phrases here. And Coral Holy's here only has, well, four phrases, kind of almost three and a half phrases, really. So we have the first phrase, and that's going to happen one, two, three, four, five times in the tune. So by the time you've learned the first phrase, you've learned um, a goodly amount of the entire melody. And the second phrase occurs four times. Then we have phrase three, again that happens four times, and we have phrase four that happens three times. Now this tune has quite a bit of technique in it, and as we get to various bits of embellishments and other such things, there will be a card, and also a link in the description below to videos and exercises to get these bits under control. Phrase one. We're going to start with an F, we're going to do a G grace note down to a low G, up to a B, low G to an A. Let's try just that much right now. We can also see here that we have a dotted eighth note. So that's telling us that that is going to be a pointed note. The dot means 50% longer than the note that is written. So that would normally be an eighth note or one half of the beat. So 50% of that would make it 75% of the beat, followed by a 16th note B and then a low G to A. So again, Then from there, we're going to go into the light D throw. So again, card up here for technique video on the light D throw. Um, but briefly, from low A, we're going to drop to a low G, up to a D, down to a C, and back up to a D. And then from there, we're going to go into an E doubling. So G grace note to E, F grace note on E. We want to make sure that we hear that E in the middle of this embellishment. It's a G grace note emphasizing the first E that we see in the embellishment, and then an F grace note taking us to that second E, the big one with the dot on it. And if you need help with doublings, again, there is a video right up here where I go into all the specifics of how you can get your doublings under control. But again, from D, G grace note to E, F grace note on E to separate into two E's. Let's go back to the beginning of the phrase now and try all the way to that E doubling. And again, we're going to push that E because it's a pointed or dotted note. And from there, we'll walk down a 16th note or relatively short D into a B doubling. So D to B doubling. So from D, we're going to lift G grace note down to B, D grace note to separate it into a second B. And then from there, low G to A. And then to put that whole phrase together, And do notice I have a metronome out here. This happens to be the 
Tempo app by Frozen Ape, but it doesn't really matter. Any of the metronome apps out there work pretty good and do the job, but we're not ready for the metronome quite yet. At this point in the game, I'm more interested in having a good sense of approximate timing, where I want the long notes long, I want the short notes short, and everything else kind of somewhere in between. But if I'm swimming a little in the tempo at this stage of the game, as I'm bringing a new tune up, that's just fine. So again, that's phrase one. That's one of the four phrases, and we already should have that under control. So play through that a few times until it feels nice and a little bit more natural under your fingers. Now, moving on to phrase two. We're gonna start now with the light D throw. So right from that low G on a dotted D, a pointed D, walking up through an E, and then a G grace note from E to F. And then from there, we're gonna go up to a high A. And then here, this is a half F doubling. Now, it's kind of a goofy name. That tends to be what they're called. I think they call it a half doubling because there's only one grace note. But wouldn't a half doubling be a singling? In any case, it's what they're called. We're gonna go straight from high A to that F and then separate with just one grace note. We're not gonna put a passing G grace note between the high A and F. We're simply gonna go straight from high A to F and then to make it a doubling, one grace note. Then from here, an E, and then just a tapping motion to separate those E's with a tapping A. So let's try all of phrase two. Just like phrase one, I would play that several times, get it nice and controlled, and when you're ready, let's actually play phrase one and then phrase two. That would be the first line of the music since we tend to write our pipe music in four bar lines. We actually look at the full tune down here, you can actually see the two phrases put together. All right, let's take a look at phrase three. So phrase three is almost exactly the same as phrase two. What's different? Rather than going to an E and tapping just a single A to separate, we're gonna go down to a D and then we're gonna do a light D strike. And again, video on strikes right there. The light D strike, however, is just the single finger. So we're gonna do a G grace note into the strike and then a single finger tap down. For the single finger tap, I tend to kind of wind up the pitch a little bit. I kind of like telegraph my punch, if you will. Like, I don't want to just like bloop like a quick little C. It's got to be kind of impactful for it to sound like something. But the light D strike shows up in a lot of the more classic melodies, so definitely something to get under control. Let's try phrase three, because it's the same, except for those last two notes, as phrase two. And just like that, that's the first half of the tune. We can see over here, I have the phrase structure written out. So it goes phrase one, phrase two, phrase one, phrase three. And then that repeats, phrase one, phrase two, phrase one, phrase three. So I got the metronome here. I have it set at 60, but pick a speed that works for you. And we're gonna go ahead and give this first part a go. Okay, we have one more phrase to learn and we have the whole tune. That's how straightforward, not just this tune, but I think you're gonna find many, many tunes. So as we move forward with learning additional tunes in the basic series here, as well as just on your own as you look at melodies, start trying to look at the two bar phrases throughout and start finding which ones match each other. You might be surprised at exactly how often either an entire phrase or maybe just a bar, but there might be a repeated bit of music that shows up more than you think. So getting that under control will kind of pays off dividends, if you will, because when you get that, and if it shows up seven times in the tune, if we look at bars two and three through this whole thing, 
the end of phrase one and the end of phrase four and the beginning of phrase two and the beginning of phrase three, well, those two bars, while not a phrase to themselves, that repeats all the way down the entire sheet of music. So you're going to do that eight times. Going through a tune, finding the repetitive bits, getting them under control can go a long way to getting the tune up and under your fingers more quickly. All right, let's go on to this fourth phrase now. So this one starts with the high G doubling. Now, this one, and again, video up here with uh, exercises on how to do this, but basically we're gonna be coming in this case from a D up to a high G, down to an F and up to a high G. Now it's not a G grace note to F, nor is it an F tap. It's kind of like that light D throw. It's kind of a more light embellishment. And not nor oh, and then that's followed by the high A doubling. And this one, again, more doubling in its nature and structure, but it's a nice sweeping quick motion of the thumb across the back hole once you get to that high A. You can sweep up, you can sweep down, do what you need to do. Some people tap. I find the tap is a little difficult. It gets a little tonal. I can kind of hear the grace note more than just the kind of the sweep of the thumb, kind of breaking the airflow apart. I want most of my grace notes to be more percussive in nature than, than tonal in nature. So I don't want to hear, I want to hear, where it's like a cha, some sort of other noise going across rather than aroda. I want the aroda to be for the, uh, the G doubling that was right before it. So this is kind of cool. We have two embellishments that look rather similar, but sound quite different next to each other. And I think it gives a nice lilting feel to the beginning of this fourth phrase. Then from there, we'll walk down from high A to F into a light D throw up to an F and then the E doubling, D, B doubling, low G, A that we had at the end of phrase one. I'm going from D to F. Avoid putting a G grace note in there. You might start finding at this point of the game, in this point in your bagpipe development, you might start actually trying to sneak in some grace notes to hide crossing noises or runs or other things. It seems like when you first learn grace notes, that wouldn't be possible. But at this stage, it actually can be easier to do the G grace note from D to F. So to make sure that stays clean, really lead with that middle finger as you're going up. I don't wanna see this, I'd rather see that with that middle finger higher. And then of course, we don't want this coming down early. We don't want that cross there either. So big cross right there, no grace note to help you cover or hide any of it. So be mindful of that little bit. So let's try just line three right now. And I'm gonna do it, no metronome yet. And then line four. And then if we look at line five, that's the second ending. So let's take a minute to talk about the structure of the repeats in that second part. For this, we see the forward facing repeat telling us where we're starting. And we're gonna go through line three and straight into line four. And you can see, because of the nature of the pickup note, it actually has the last half of beat two starting line four. So that's where that went in case you were curious. But now we see the number one. This is gonna be our first ending. So. Line three, line four, we see the repeat sign. That's gonna take us back to the top of line three. Now we play through line three, but we're gonna skip line four, and then we're gonna go to the second ending, which is line five. In this case, line three, line four, line three, line five. So let's try that with the metronome, part two.
right now, I'm going to just play through the whole tune here. 60 seems like a good speed for a beginner. If it needs to be 50, that's just fine. Again, pick the speed that works for you. This ultimately is probably going to be played more 85 to 92 when you're playing in parades and other such things. This is a very common street tune, as they're often called, because they're used to march parades. But for now, in the process of what we're doing, we're going to go ahead, keep it at 60, and I don't circular breathe, so I will have to take some breaths as I play this. I don't think I'll do it all on one breath. But let's have a go at Corholi's Welcome to the Northern Meeting. And just like that, that's all of Corholi's 43rd Welcome to the Northern Meeting, a classic tune played all the time by pipers all over the world. And I promise, if you break it up into phrases, learn those phrases, you should be able to have this memorized in, I would say, an hour, maybe a day. It definitely shouldn't take a week. So get the core components, get these phrases down, get them learned, remember the order in which they go, and you can play the tune. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a long way to helping support the channel. You'll see names of folks scrolling up right now. These are folks that support the channel monthly, and I'd love to add your name to this list. There are perks such as early access to videos and other unique content, so go ahead, head over to my Patreon, check that out, and yeah. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with uh, mugs such as this and hats and water bottles and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. So go ahead, get yourself some bagpipe merchandise, and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>